Dear all, I would like to welcome you all in the playlist of sensors and transducers. In this session, I will be discussing the different methods of measurement of viscosity. Before moving on to the session, I request everyone to subscribe my channel. If the content is really useful, kindly share with your friends and colleagues. In the last session, we have discussed about the importance of measurement of viscosity. As you can able to see, there are two major methods of measurement of viscosity. One is mechanical method, another one is electrical method. Moving on to the mechanical methods, we have rotating cylinder method, falling spear method, capillary tube method and efflux visco viscometers. And electrical methods, there are few. We will be discussing individually. First, let us get to understand. What do we mean by rotating cylinder method? Consider the diagram. We can able to observe two cylinders. This is your outer rotating cylinder and we have the inner stationary cylinder. Okay, it is a movable cylinder. Outer cylinder is movable where inner cylinder is kept stationary. In between inner and outer cylinder, you will be keeping a viscous fluid. That viscosity has to be tested. So, both the cylinders are in a concentric arrangement. And also, the outer cylinder has been connected with a shaft which will be rotating at a speed of omega, angular speed of omega. And also, it is connected with a torsional spring which is shown in the diagram. And there is a dial and pointer which is kept along with the particular spring. The overall device, rotating cylinder method, that works based on the principle of Newton's law of viscosity which we discussed in the previous session. That means the shear stress tau is directly proportional to uh, mu that means dynamic viscosity and du by dy which we already discussed in the previous session. Now what you are supposed to do is you need to rotate the outer cylinder at a angular speed of omega. Definitely the torque will be transferred from outer cylinder to inner cylinder through the particular liquid. What is the liquid? Yes, that is that may be any of the liquid which the viscosity need to be measured. Therefore, you are able to measure the torque by using the uh, torsional strain. That means torsional spring setup you will be able to measure the torque. Okay, so you are measuring the time, then uh, the speed, everything you are going to measure. Inner diameter, outer diameter and there is an equation. So using the equation, you will be determining the value of torque. The equation is given as uh, t is equal to mu into pi square r1 square r2 hn divided by 15 t. So here uh, r1 and r2 are the radii of inner and outer cylinder, n is the speed of rotation and uh, uh, h is the height of the liquid and t is the angular speed. So angular speed and linear speed you can able to calculate. Okay, Omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 that you can able to measure. From this you can able to compute n. It is very simple. So by using the equation you can able to compute the torque that is directly proportional to the viscosity. Let us discuss about another method that is a falling spear method. So in this particular method a small spherical ball you can able to see that is released into the liquid to be tested. So we have the liquid here. Okay, uh, we have the liquid. Liquid will be inside the particular tube. Uh, then you will be releasing a spear from the top to bottom. Clear? And surrounding you can able to see a constant temperature bath in the particular just like a test tube type to set up is there. In the surrounding area you can able to see a constant temperature bath because the, because the temperature will be influencing uh, the viscosity. So the temperature should be maintained constant so that constant temperature bath is provided. Then, then we can able to say that the sphere will be releasing from top to bottom. So, uh, the formula will be available to calculate the viscosity. The dynamic viscosity can be computed by using the formula GD square by 18 V into rho s minus rho f where rho s is the density of the sphere, rho f is the density of a liquid or any type of fluid. Then uh, what the here velocity need to be measured that rho f means the velocity of the fluid which need to be sorry density of the fluid which need to be measured. Rho s is the density of the sphere. Okay, it is made up of metal, right? D is the diameter of the spherical ball. Here you can able to see the spherical ball. And V is the terminal viscosity. So by using the formula, you can easily calculate. V is the velocity, okay? Not viscosity. This is the velocity. T is the velocity. There is a correction. Please update velocity. 
clear velocity or speed in terms of meter per second you can able to calculate the dynamic viscosity clear this is the way how to calculate the viscosity by using falling sphere method here you have to consider density of the particular sphere and fluid temperature has to be maintained constant all right you have to remember the formula for computing the dynamic viscosity another method is capillary tube method first i would like to introduce the diagram so you know capillary rise right so here there is a tank where the flu viscosity of fluid has to be measured so fluid will be filled inside the tank then there is a capillary tube okay and uh, here there is a wall we can have the opening we can control the movement of the flu uh, fluid then there is a, a glass piezometer which is kept over the to measure the height how well the liquid is rising okay if the liquid is having less viscosity means it uh, the glass piezometer shows higher reading okay it rises very fastly then there is a capillary tube with a diameter d and uh, there is a measuring tank clear uh, the l is the distance between glass piezometer and uh, the the point at which measuring tank has been kept h is the height of the uh, glass piezometer therefore you can able to compute the dynamic viscosity by using the formula pi omega h d raised to 4 by 128 ql where q is the discharge of the liquid in terms of meter cube per second omega is the weight density of the liquid and mu is the coefficient of viscosity that means dynamic viscosity h is the difference in pressure so using this setup you can able to calculate the viscosity of the given liquid it comprises of a tank in which the liquid whose velocity is to be measured we already shown a capillary tube with a diameter d and length l is attached horizontally very close to the bottom the liquid is collected by the measuring tank for the given time time will be measured uh, then the rate of liquid collected the, at the tank per second is determined the pressure head is measured at a point far away from the tank that is also possible so this has explanation about capillary tube method i hope you understood the formula is important using the you are going to measure the time for filling the tank and you are checking the the speed okay then you are measuring the discharge then you can easily calculate the mu next is efflux uh, viscometer here we can have uh, a particular measuring cylinder and we, we can able to observe the capillary tube then uh, the constant temperature bath we are going to maintain the temperature of the uh, liquid uh, in a constant range else the viscosity will be different for the purpose we are maintaining a constant temperature bath it is also known as seibolt viscometer it comprises of a tank in bottom of in a short capillary tube there is a capillary tube and a collecting tank a constant temperature bath is provided at the surrounding our ultimate goal is to measure the viscosity of the liquid which is kept inside the particular uh, what i can say seibolt meter okay then the viscosity is determined by measuring the time required for 60 cm cube of the liquid at non temperature to follow out of the reservoir through the tube so therefore you can able to check it very easily so you are going to measure the viscosity by measuring the time required for 60 cm cube that means volume of a liquid at non temperature to flow out of the reservoir through the tube so that will be done in a flux viscometer so there are few electrical methods in case of electrical method the measuring the electrical input to a small motor driving impeller or a steer in the fluid you are actually uh, using a small motor and uh, with the impeller which is connected to the in coupled with the impeller and you are trying to steer the fluid in that you are measuring some parameters then electrical determination of angle of flag is a resilient mechanism through which the impeller is driven so this is actually the measuring parameter electrical determination of angle of flag in a resilient mechanism through which the impeller is driven impeller is coupled with uh, the particular motor and another method of measurement of viscosity by electrical method is magnetostriction i'll make a separate topic on magnetostriction then determination of electrical loading on excitating the circuit provided by measuring the viscosity so uh, these are the different uh, strategy for the measurement of viscosity by using uh, the electrical methods so in this video we have discussed about mechanical methods and electrical methods and we have gone through uh, the individual methods such as efflux viscometers then capillary tube methods later falling sphere method and rotating cylinder method and also i have suggested a few electrical methods which you can able to inculcate for the measurement of viscosity so let me know if you are having any questions 